Cole Miles, Smith. big win going into Cole Smith's backyard, halting the Cole train. How do you feel, man? I feel good. You know, it was a real humbling experience, honestly. Um, Cole was even a little bit tougher than I thought. I knew it was a big task, uh, undefeated, Canada's top prospect coming in his backyard, but um, he was even tougher than I thought. Um, so to get the dub feels great. Yeah, he's a big opponent. He's, he's, he's probably fight a featherweight. Have you fought someone that big before? I haven't fought somebody that tall before, no, and his legs were a lot longer in the cage than I even imagined um, outside of it. So, And he was, real, he was real heavy when he was hanging on me on the cage, trying to get the underhooks and stuff. So he was a big, tough, grimy dude, and um, yeah, it was, a, it was a learning experience for sure. And you had a long road to get to the UFC. I mean, it wasn't easy uh, going through LFA and, and everything else. Um, you know, how, now that you finally got the first UFC win, how does it feel? It feels great, man. I'm so grateful for my team and my coaches, um, and I'm so grateful for that long journey, man. I think that third round, um, being able to pull it out and take that fight away from him in the third round has a lot to do with um, my come up through LFA, the Contender Series, and just my coaches and team at Fortis MMA and my strength conditioning coach, Mike. Um, without those guys, I wouldn't have that extra push um, to take that third round. I was sitting on the bench in between those rounds, and I looked over at him, and uh, he was gassing a little bit, and I was ready to go. So that let me know, like, uh, all right, let's go get it. Did you feel them going out? Um, I didn't feel the jitters, but the crowd was even a little more than I thought. You know, like, I was I was looking forward to that, and that brings excitement and uh, sets the stage kind of. But um, just standing there and hearing all of the, Cole's going to kick your butt, blah, 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 blah. It was just kind of a surreal feeling, you know. And uh, that's that's competition, man. That's what I love. I love competing at the highest levels, you know. And I know that this experience is going to set me up and prepare me more for future experiences in the UFC. So I'm real grateful for it. Uh, so you like going into enemy territory, kind of playing the bad guy? I mean, I would like to fight in Dallas next time. It's been, <laughs> it's been kind of. I mean, it doesn't have to be Dallas, but I'll, I'll go anywhere, man. I was, I was happy to have my UFC de debut in enemy territory. It's kind of like when I used to think about it years ago. It's kind of how I pictured it, like having to go to Brazil or something and fight some crazy Brazilian in their backyard, you know. So it, it kind of gave me that feel. But I want to be mad to go a little closer to home next time. Can you talk about that third round? Because that seemed to be a very pivotal, pivotal round. Like, how, how? T I mean, he looked completely exhausted on camera. How, was, how did it feel for you to look at him across the cage? I saw that he was tired and I knew that I had gas and um but really, it didn't even matter. He could have been he could have been not tired at all, and I would have went out there and tried to steal that fight. I just knew sitting in between the second and third round that if I didn't go out there and just uh, let everything go, that I was going to walk away with the L. So um, that just goes to my training, my training partners, my team, my strength and conditioning coach. Uh, that's what we do at Fortis, man. We go out there and we steal fights, and uh, that's what I had to do. I had to take a soul. Cole Smith is a fighter that you called out specifically. Uh, you didn't get a chance for a uh, post fight interview here, but do you have your next shot ready? Like someone to call it? Um, no, there's a lot. There's a lot of tough guys in the division, you know. And um, I'm just gonna go back to the drawing board. That fight definitely was kind of an eye opener to some things that I want to work on. Um, so I'm just gonna go back, get healthy. I hurt my hand a little bit in the third round, so um, we're just gonna see what happens next. Uh, what about this fight specifically? You, you asked for Colt Smith. Um, what uh, What about that fight like appealed to you? Well, he's a, one, he's an undefeated guy. I love fighting undefeated guys. Um, Canada's top prospect. And he got that short notice fight against Mitch Gangon, which is a fight that I really wanted. I was watching that whole card. There's three band and weight fights on it. And I knew somebody was going to pull out. And I just thought that was going to be my moment. When somebody pulled out, I was going to jump in. So when he got that fight and then watching him get the win against Mitch Gangon, um, I was just like, man, that'd be an awesome debut. And somebody um, tweeted, uh, maybe one of you guys, maybe Miles Johns versus... Uh, Cole Smith in Vancouver the day after my contender series fight, the morning after, and I saw that on Twitter and something. It was just an uh, intuition I had in my stomach, like, I think that's going to happen. Was it the fight you were expecting? Like it, I, for some reason, when I saw that tweet, like, I even told my family, like, I told my wife, hey, let's make sure we have the kids' passports ready because I have a feeling we might be going to Vancouver for our first fight, and uh, we're here now. And so, um, so I was kind of expecting it, but I wasn't. I wasn't for sure, obviously. Yeah. Just two here. Um, what's it like having the family with you to bring them along for this whole ride? It's amazing, man. My family means everything to me. You know, I, um, I don't fight for them. I fight for myself. Um, but to have their support, I mean, it's just like. Uh, I'm not going to let that, that's in between the third, second and third round. I'm not going to let that extra 10 G's go um, because I got to feed my kids. You know what I mean? So um, it's amazing. This time I had them come out after I made weight. Last time for the contender series, they were with me the whole time when I was cutting weight and stuff in the flight from Dallas to Vegas with two kids. 
cutting low calories like that. It was tough. So this time they came out. Shout out to my wife. She had them. She held down the fort while I was gone and stuff. But being able to bring my wife up to the green room after this and going, being able to kiss my kids um, goodnight tonight is just, uh, that that means everything to me. So it's, it's awesome. Florida Summit May has really been this breakout gym over the last 12 months. Training there, what's the atmosphere like? Do you guys feel like you're on top of something new, something exciting, something that's going to make a big splash? Uh, we don't really... I mean, we're doing the same thing that we've always been doing, you know, just time tells. Like, we've been working hard. We know we were the best team in the world for a long time. Like, even when we were fighting for Legacy before it turned into LFA, we knew what we had there. We knew the guys that we had there. So time tells all, you know. We just kept our head down. We kept working and working and working. And now we're here. Now we're finally starting to get our name on the global scene. And we're going to continue to work. I mean, we're working harder still. I can't tell you all the secrets that are going on behind those closed doors, but I can just tell you that we're working. And and um, there's a lot more to come from Fortis, especially this guy right here. I mean, uh, that's my little brother. He's four and one. He's a problem. And I mean, we just got a lot of sharks. I mean, we could drop him in the UFC right now, and I'm sure he could take out half the roster. So, um, yeah, we got a lot of guys that are just here working hard for each other for one common goal, and it's amazing. You mentioned LFA. The future's a little bit grim right now with Access TV getting rid of it. What was your reaction when you heard that news? It was sad, man. You know, um, I feel like, I mean, I don't really know the ins and outs, but I feel like a lot of people watch Access TV for LFA. Of course, I'm biased because that's all I watch on there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was kind of sad to hear that news. But MMA is a growing sport, man. It's blowing up right now. So I'm sure uh, something's going to come up. But, yeah, I was, uh, I was a little disappointed to hear that. And, and speaking of LFA, uh, Ricky Simone and you nearly fought in LFA. It looked like that was going to happen at some point. Just You guys were both on the, on the come up, and he went to the UFC. Is that a fight down the line you'd like just because you guys had, had both come through the LFA system? Uh, down the line, yeah. Ricky's got a lot of experience, you know, and I've been, I've been kind of keeping an eye on him. Uh, he was actually on the Contender Series when I, when Steven was, and I came, and he was there, and I was still a year behind. So in the future, man, yeah, everybody on the roster is a future fight, and that, that's another tough dude, just uh, kind of very similar to me. So um, yeah, that's definitely a fight down the line that uh, we'll be looking at. Miles, how did all this uh, compare to the Contender Series experience, and also, or even uh, you know, LFA title fight? You know, how, how do all these experiences stack up against each other? Um, it was completely different, man. Uh, stepping into that arena and hearing everybody booing me and all this stuff, man, it was a completely different experience. But everything that I've done leading up to this point has uh, made me ready for it. You know, I was real comfortable. I just took it all in, and it was like, uh, yeah, man, I just, I just felt comfortable and free in there. It was, it was real exciting, exactly what I was looking for for a UFC debut. I mean, I would have rather got the knockout, but aside from that, yeah. Outside the booing tonight, uh, how's Vancouver treated you? They've treated me real well, man. Uh, uh, like just walking down the street after dinner yesterday, people stopping and being like, hey, let's go. We're going to be there. You know, that pumps you up. You know, like it's like uh, there was lots of people that ran into me. It's like Miles Johns. And it's like, whoa, you know me? You know, of course, some of the people driving by didn't know I was fighting their hometown boys. So it could have been a little bit different to me if they would have known that. But they've been treating me good. And uh, I'm ex I haven't got time to see the city really, so I'm excited now. I stay in two extra days. I'm excited to get, uh, get a feel for the city and taste some of their good food. You mentioned that obviously knockout would have made it better. Uh, you know, you had a split tonight, and then uh, you had a good scrap with Richie on the Tender Series, and then a five round, you know, the last round before that, the LFA title fight, five round split decision. Are you getting used to kind of having to sweat these things out? Like Man, I, I mean, I guess so, you know. Before we were looking at stats before this fight, I guess I've spent over two hours in the cage. Plus, I add another 15 minutes now, you know, I'm ready to I'm ready to go in there and get my knockout and get a bonus. But for now, I'll take the experience. You know, there's nothing better than getting that experience in there in the octagon. So, um so yeah, I'm ha I'm I, I wish I would have got the knockout, but I'm happy for the experience.